Hi, welcome to Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor at Pixel, and I'm joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Good to be here. Nice to see you. Uh, it's like a somber note to, uh, in this episode because it marks, or we're going to mark the passing of Jerry Greenberg, who's a pioneering underwater photographer um, in America. Um, and although neither Alex or I personally knew him, I think that's correct, isn't it, Alex? Yeah, no, um, no, he certainly was one of the the giants of of, of um, underwater imaging, um, and has a legacy of um, of creative ideas. Um, one of the things when we discussing this episode is that he actually went from shooting on two and a quarter inch film to thirty five mil film to digital, um, and I think that's obviously that shows you the time span. Um, that he was involved in creating underwater images. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, I think what was really remarkable is, you know, he stayed engaged with underwater photography all through his life, you know, despite having a very successful career in that kind of late 60s into the 70s, yeah. where he was shooting for every magazine and, you know, constantly on assignment yeah. and, you know, do, doing all sorts of things underwater. Yeah. I think, you know, the fact that he stayed engaged even when that side of his career had, had finished, I think, was, was really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Just a real passion for the for the for the sport. Stephen Frank um, did a, a, an interview with him in in uh, Alert Diver. Um, I see Frank. I, I knew Jerry fairly well, um, and mm. um, the, the, one of Stephen's questions sprung to. Oh, I, I'm just going to read it out because it, it sort of resonated. Um, and Stephen Stephen's comment: one of the most memorable underwater photo spreads I've ever seen happening to to be by you in a 1962 edition of National Geographic. As a kid living in the Midwest, I was in awe of your two-part series, Key Largo, America's first underwater park, and Florida's Coral City Beneath the Sea. This had to be a very special time in your life. And, and, and Jerry replies, I was very proud of my work with National Geographic. Bill Garrett was a terrific editor. And in the 1960s and 70s, I had more photos published in National Geographic than any other freelance contributor. I wrote extensively about that assignment in my 1971 book, Man Fish with a Camera. And it was a result from that assignment. Yeah, I think you have it in your hand, don't you? There we are. Yeah. You're a man fish with the camera. Um, and, and it was the results from that assignment that to a greater extent fueled my early stock photography business. I did another major story for them on sharks in 1968. And then an underwater photo essay, essay featuring my wife and three kids in St. Croix in 1971, entitled Buck Island Underwater Jewel. Of course, my dear friend David Dublay holds the record for underwater covers and articles in National Geographic, but I had a nice run with him for quite a while. The last major piece I did for National Geographic was in the July 1990 issue. Done in collaboration with Fred Ward, the coral heads of Florida are imperiled, maybe one of, the most, my, one of, maybe one of my most significant works. Not because I was documenting the degradation of the coral reef with then and now -ish images, but because it raised awareness. High-ranking politicians at a national level saw that story, and I'm told it was no coincidence that the Florida Keys National Park Marine Sanctuary was authorised that same year. That may be the greatest contribution I ever made to the reef I love so dearly, their ultimate protection. I think that's a wonderful um, mm. w wonderful thing to be to be able to, to look back on a career and say that that's something you've done. I think it's a, a, great, uh, a great tribute to someone, really. Yeah, and, you know, I think almost, you know, there's so many of the big marine conservation changes throughout the oceans that have been driven by imagery yeah you know, Im you know because to be honest most of the people who are making the decisions don't go and see these places have no idea what they are yep. and that's why the imagery that we all create is incredibly important and i think you know one of jerry's legacies is that yep. i'm sort of more familiar with his work as a photographer and i, I think partly because of the era he was in yep. but i think partly because he was driven to push boundaries back He's credited with, with a lot of firsts in underwater photography. And I, I know this always is a slightly controversial subject about who did what first. Yeah. And certainly back in that period, it is a case that the world wasn't joined up like it is now. And there were people all around the world in different countries doing the same things and not communicating and all sort of being first across the line in the sphere that they knew. Yeah. Um, but in my book, um, Underwater Photography Masterclass, I credited Jerry Greenberg as being the originator of close focus wide angle photography, which is arguably the most important technique in underwater photography. Yeah. And the stories I've read about when he first started showing those pictures were people thought that they were created in the dark room because they were so dramatic and so unbelievably impactful that people were just like, you couldn't create this in camera. And yeah. of course he was able to using an ultra wide angle lens and creating that close focus 
wide view look that is so fundamental in underwater photography. Oh. And I, I think that, you know, to have any sort of you know legacy on the technical side of underwater photography, I think you know he, he deserves a lot for that. Also, I did note from reading um, reading through his book um, as well, which I, I've had for a while, um, that um, he also took the the first panoramic pictures underwater, right. which I I, um, I, I um, hadn't hadn't known before reading 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 this his old autobiography, and also that. Um, when I, I was speaking um, a few weeks ago, actually just before he, he died, actually, with um, well-known shark photographer Jeremy Stafford Deitch from the UK, who sort of was very active in the 80s and 90s, did shark books and things. And in, in my book, Underwater Photography Masterclass, I credit Jeremy as being one of the first people to take pictures of sharks, of sharks in their environment. Yeah. And, and the way Jeremy did that is he would put bait, small amounts of bait, in pretty parts of the reef. To pull sharks exactly where he wanted them to create beautiful reef shots with sharks in them yeah. to show sharks naturally in their environment and, and jeremy's quite disparaging i don't know if he wants to be quoted on this but i'm sure he doesn't mind too much um about a lot of modern shark photography he calls it kind of shark porn yeah where you, it's just all about you know it's just teeth. unsubtle teeth and in your face yeah, yeah. stuff and he really likes this sharks as part of the environment type picture yeah and i, I credited jeremy for that in, in my book um, as someone who, who sort of originated that idea of trying to create, get sharks into life. And he actually said he got the idea from Jerry Greenberg's um, late, was it late 60s um, yeah. piece in, in National Geographic, yeah. where his photography there, he'd got the first pictures of um, of bull sharks and great hammerhead sharks, and it clearly got them to the parts of the reef um, that he wanted to photograph them in by using bait. And yeah. Jeremy sort of reverse engineered his approach and yeah. got his inspiration from there. Yeah. Um, there's a photo I wanted to show, which um, I know you'll like, Adam, because it's I can I can see you in a very similar sort of pose. <laughs> it's a picture of, of, of Jerry with That's all it. his camera yeah. gear. There we go. Yeah, looks, um, yeah, yeah. I'm looks sure we similar. can get Adam with a similar type yeah. of shot like that. But I, I really like that that picture that um, yeah. sort of yeah. you know bring, brings home um, all the gear that he had down the years for his. Yeah. It's and, interesting to know. Twenty thousand dollars. That you could you could spend more than that on a single yeah, system. Yeah, easy. Days. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> interesting to note that in the in the, he invented a, and designed and produced the first housing for the the Kodak Box Brownie, um, hmm. and um, the notes that it says is that he sold three thousand units, and they were the princely sum of fourteen ninety five. That's dollars. So it's fourteen dollars ninety five cents um, for underwater housing. So I guess twenty oh, yeah, grand. That's a, that, well, that's that's just a lot a of housing. Price. For, for 20 grand yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah um so so he had a, i mean I, I think possibly obviously there's a creative side of it but also um he also produced aluminium housings um you know and this is back in the 50s when when obviously it was mm. very very much a very niche yeah, activity there's a, there's a nice photo um, actually here i'll show you um again that's a picture um with his leica housing there you go in, yeah. in the 50s yeah yeah which would have been 35 mil alex leicas yeah yeah that would have been yeah. 35 mil yeah yeah, yeah. I think, you know, the increased frame rate over two and a quarter inch is, you know, of, of medium format film, I think, is made 35 mil. And yeah. the quality of the emulsions was going on at that point then. Yeah. That those pictures were, were very usable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that, that I do, always resonates with me, though, is he was someone who remained engaged in underwater photography. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, he wasn't someone who, when he stopped doing the frontline stuff, just gave it all up and did something else. You know, he, he did stay engaged. And I know he used to, I know, from reading and listening to what Stephen Frank wrote about his passing, I know that he, he stayed really engaged um, with Stephen. In, in fact, in that interview that I mentioned earlier, um, Stephen asked him, where do you see the future and all imaging? And this is so, so uh, possibly a little perspective. He's just been talking about digital imaging. So he's just been talking about shooting on digital now. Um, and uh, Stephen asked him, where do you see the future underwater imaging? Um, and he says, this is an exciting time to be an underwater photographer. There's some really great photos being shown on webpixel.com, the stuff you're doing, and the things I've seen featured in New Alert Diver. Um, people are traveling further and spending more time in the water capturing strange and beautiful behaviors. When I began doing underwater photography, I had to invent gear and techniques. It's not like that anymore, but don't use the P word on me. I'm not the pioneer. There are plenty of great photographers who went before me, William Longley, J. E. Williamson, Peter Stackpole, Louis Marden, and Dmitry Rybakov, amongst many others. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. And in actual fact, the, um, the interview is titled On the Shoulders of Giants, so, so quite fitting, really. 
Um, well, and... I, I think from our perspective, I think Jerry Greenberg was a real giant of Absolutely. our time. And I think his yeah, yeah. modesty there, um, I think the things that he contributed to, to our thing is, is, you know, will remain. And I think it's why, although neither of us met him, I thought it was it's really worthwhile us talking about him here and hopefully yep. introducing his name and his work to a, a wider audience than perhaps know about it these days. Yep. So we'll, we'll, we'll put the link um, for Stephen's interview so you can read it in full in the, in the notes about this, uh, this uh, episode as well, so you can read it. Um, but please, if you get a chance, go out, Google Jerry Greenberg, um, possibly Jerry Greenberg and a book photographer, because I think there's probably more than one Jerry, Jerry Greenberg in, in on Google. Um, and, um, and have a look and see what he did. I mean, amazing stuff. And um, obviously, very sad to hear his passing. Our, our thoughts go to his friends and family. Um, and, you know, we hope that, um, well, the great news is that, that his legacy will live on in, uh, in Florida and, and elsewhere. So thank you very much. Thanks to Alex. Um, and um, f thanks as well to our sponsors, which was Bunaken Oasis. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, please contribute to a like or add a like if you enjoyed this episode. Um, please feel free to add comments in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much.